All right, we're on blood now. Well, actually, before we move to blood, let me uh, talk about a couple of things from the endocrine system. And let's just end that. Um, all right, y'all can see. All right, hopefully, you guys can see the, the board. Yes, I can. <clears throat> There's a couple of things that I forgot to talk about from the endocrine system. And one is this um, one is calcium. Calcium, uh, about, about 99% of calcium is found in uh, bones and bones and teeth. And then 1% is in the blood. The 1% in the blood is more important than the rest of the calcium that's in your bone. So we have some, um, we have a couple of hormones that regulate this and they're tied in with the uh, thyroid. So you should know by now that the thyroid, one of the things that it does is it makes those two hormones, T3 and T4. The other name for T4 is thyroxin. So it makes T3 and thyroxin and they regulate your metabolism. Right? That's one thing that it does. And what makes the T3 and thyroxin? The follicular cells. But we also have parafollicular cells. Parafollicular cells of the thyroid make something called um, calcitonin. What calcitonin does is um, it lowers blood calcium. I'm just going to put one plus sign, not two, but. So it lowers blood calcium. There is another hormone that does the opposite. So <clears throat> you have the thyroid gland, and there's pretty much two types of cells in the thyroid gland, follicular cells and parafollicular. Then there's a whole other gland that's actually attached to the thyroid called the parathyroid. And the parathyroid gland has these cells called chief cells. So I wrote this out because these two words might be confusing. So the thyroid makes T3 and T4 thyroxine. And those are made by the follicular cells. And then the parafollicular cells make calcitonin. So we talked about the follicular cells, we didn't talk about the parafollicular cells. And I put this CT for calcitonin. Um, you know, calcitonin lowers, and then lowers blood calcium. Then we have parathyroid hormone, I mean parathyroid gland, which they're actually nodules attached to the back side of the thyroid gland. So your thyroid gland's here, and then there's like two lobes of it on both sides. And then if you were to look at the posterior portion of those lobes, you would find nodules, which, are the, which we consider a separate gland even though really it's kind of attached to the thyroid. And then, so the cells of those, of that gland, the parathyroid gland, we call them chief cells, and the chief cells make a hormone called parathyroid hormone. Uh, 
parathyroid hormone raises blood calcium. So they're working to keep the blood calcium levels normal. ETH raises it, calcitonin lowers it. How? How does it do it? How does it raise or lower it? There's a couple of different ways. Um, you can increase or decrease absorption of calcium. So if you're trying to raise the calcium in your blood, you would want to increase calcium absorption. You would want to increase the amount of calcium that you get from your food, right? Because you're trying to get more in your blood. So you just absorb more out of your food. If you want to try to get some calcium out of your blood, you would <coughs> absorb less. So that's it. I mean, you just absorb more or absorb less. There is some things with vitamin D. So I'm not going like, to get into the particulars, really, but it, essentially what it is is PTH will, will because vitamin D helps you absorb calcium, right? So vitamin D and calcium are linked. The more vitamin D you have, the more you can absorb calcium. So parathyroid hormone wants you to absorb more calcium, but it's also going to try to boost your levels of vitamin D. So it's going to encourage your body, and your body makes its own vitamin D. I mean, you get vitamin D from food, but you also make it. So PTH is going to try to encourage your body to make more. It's made by your liver. You're going to try to make more. And of course, calcitonin will do the opposite. Try to make less. But the most important or the most relevant part is this third part, which you might not be able to see here. And I'm going to write osteo, what am I going to write, clast. Do you remember what osteoclasts do? First of all, osteo, so where are we talking about? Bone, for sure. Bone. Well, do you remember it now? Rebuilding. Yeah. yeah, 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 you're on the right track. So building. Rebuilding and in this case, osteoblast build because it's got the B in it. B for building. Osteoclast C for like cutting up. There you go. So osteoclast cut up bone. So osteoclasts are not necessarily good. They're like the bad guys because they're going into bone and they're starting to put holes into your bone and pull out calcium. They're mining calcium. And they're doing that because you don't have enough in your blood. So when you don't have enough, yeah, right there, when you don't have enough calcium in your blood, your body releases PTH. And then with PTH, that's going to stimulate the osteoclast to go and take bone, which is what you don't want. But it doesn't matter because you need that calcium for your heart. Your heartbeat depends on calcium. So your heart is more important than anything else, including your brain. Your body will sacrifice your own brain to save the heart. So the heart's beating. That's it. We don't care about bone. So PTH will stimulate osteoclasts. They, they, you know, get them going to break down bone. Calcitonin will do the opposite. Inhibit osteoclasts. Now you just think about what your goal is. If the goal is to raise calcium in your blood, then you want to be able to absorb it better. You want to make sure you're making more vitamin D. And you want to get calcium out of your bones. Calcitonin is all of these three, but the opposite. Just 
whatever their opposite is. If this increases cal cal uh, calcium absorption, calcitonin will decrease it. So they work to they work to keep things um, you know they work to keep a homeostasis. They're not having enough cal calcium not having enough calcium in your blood is which means that's because you don't have enough in your diet. And that's going to lead to, um, yeah, things like uh, now osteoporosis is linked to, and we're not going to go over it, but it's 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 linked to estrogen, like a lack of estrogen production. So it's actually linked to menopause. So that's a high risk. That's why women over fifty are in the high risk category, right? But there's other besides osteoporosis, and that's kind of a different thing. That's like that's something with your bones. But it's linked to, and we're not going to go over it. That's why I'm not. But it's 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 not necessarily linked to calcium and vitamin D, right? That, that when you're a woman over 50, you're going to take more calcium. Like you should maybe think about taking taking some calcium pills, or make sure you eat enough food with calcium, right? But for other people, it's for people in other groups, it's related to not having enough in your diet. It's not related to like menopause or anything. So, like someone like me, if I get like osteomalacia, they'll just call it something different. But osteomalacia, or kids, they'll call it rickets. It's it's because of that. Or or realistically, I mean, also it's it's nowadays we're finding that it's a lot because of um, vitamin vitamin D. <clears throat> it's it's social. Your, your, your skin makes vitamin D. People that are in the north, they spend a lot of the year not going outside because the weather sucks. And so they're already not outside. And then you add it on top of that, you know, playing video games and finding other things to make people stay inside. And um, that's the problem. Like that becomes a problem because you're not outside, and then the sun's not shining on your skin and causing your skin to make vitamin D. And therefore, you're not making. You're not. You know, vitamin D is related to calcium absorption. None of that's on the test. I'm just. But it's not something that you're not going to have in your program because this is like a thing that that people get. So. But I mean, just remember, vitamin D and calcium are related. The more vitamin D, the more calcium. So, but anyway, this is PTH and this is calcitonin. They, they are antagonists. They do opposite things. You don't want this one released. That means you're not getting enough in your diet. And then when you keep putting holes in your bones, right, it's going to break. But there's like, there's the word. You know, we know osteo means bone, and then we know like pore means pores. You're getting pores in your bone. And then when something ends in osis, that means that sucks for you. So it sucks for you, you've got pores in your bones. So like, that's why med term is important, so that you could just, I mean, obviously you know this word, but you know, if I were to take another word, <laughs> That's another form of sucks to be you. Mal means bad. If you remember anything from high school Spanish, but you took four years of it and you can't say anything. But mal meant bad. So bad bones. Sucks to be you, you have bad bones. Anyway. That's that, so let me erase this. So that's kind of confusing, parafollicular, parathyroid, <clears throat> but these are two different glands. And I'm, I'm, not, and I'm telling you this because some people, like, not some, but you know, a, a good number of people have like autoimmune, like the, the thyroid's attacking, their, their body's attacking the thyroid. And so they'll get some of their thyroid gland taken out. It's not all that uncommon. And you'll see it on people. You'll see little, like now they can kind of come in through the ear, but, but you'll see it 
um, people with incisions on their neck, little ones, like usually on, like on the side. When they get some of that thyroid taken out, they're going to take the, it's not like they try to, it's just that you know, this has to come out too. Right, so um, <clears throat> if they do that, then there's also a calcium deal, right? So someone that has thyroid issues might have calcium issues. But anyway, I, I'm talking too much. This, this is the important part right here between my hands. I keep thinking if I make it all relevant to something that you'll be interested in it, but I know in my heart that most of you are just trying to get through the class. I understand that. All right, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the pancreas. That's at the end of the chapter. So the pancreas is a is it has an endocrine function and an exocrine function, meaning that it releases stuff that goes into your blood, and it releases stuff that also goes through a duct. We're going to talk about that part, the duct part, at the, towards the end of the semester. So if there's an exocrine function. The, the pancreas makes a bunch of digestive enzymes. They go into your intestine. <coughs> That's the exocrine. Here we're talking about hormones because it makes four hormones. So the first hormone that it makes is called glucagon. By the way, these cells have names. Um, I'm not going to really put them because. People get hung up on the names, but just, just uh, FYI, these are called alpha cells and those are called beta cells. So, and um, you're not going to really see a lot of these too. Uh, mostly you spend a lot of time concentrating on this. Glucagon and insulin. These two because of type 2 diabetes is like the big growing disease. You're going to see, if you work with, like, any, if you do anything with, with, with patients, including like Billy and Cody, you're going to start to see the same things like pop up and it'll, it'll look, it'll look something like this, uh, I don't know. It'll look like this. Something like this. You start to see these things like together, right? Hypertension, congestive heart failure, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and then stroke. So it gets to the point where you start to just like make judgments about people and you start to like. Right, and, you, and then also you might see a renal, you, you'll actually see renal failure on here as well. Like a lot of people, especially in New Orleans, a lot of people have like all these things that are living with all these things. Right? You have to see these things over and over. Like that, so diabetes is a big one, right? And then, and then long-term diabetes is gonna lead to, they're all linked, they're all linked. So, um, you start to see that stuff over and over. So, yeah, pancreas and insulin. So diabetes actually is, there's two types, right? So type 1 and type 2. Type 1, they call it juvenile diabetes. Not that it's really juvenile, but it's, it's your body not, your pancreas is not making insulin. Here, your body makes insulin, but the cells aren't responding. So they call this one juvenile because all of a sudden, you know, who tends to get it when you're younger? So all of a sudden when you're 13, 15, 17, whatever, all of a sudden your, your, your beta cells the, all the cells in your pancreas stop making insulin, period. 
right? So that's kind of like uh, it happens really quick. Type two happens more slowly. It tends to happen as you get older. You could be pre-diabetic. It's, it, it's I mean, what, what's going on is that you know these two hormones are working to keep your 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 blood sugar at like a normal level, right? And everyone's got different opinions about what a normal level is. I'm just putting, you know, some just to make it easy, somewhere around 100 would be nice. So we'll say 90 through 110. I mean, you, you know, 120 is okay, and 85 is okay, and you know, everyone's got all these different opinions, right? Um, something like 70 is like low, and then you know, you could have 200 and and. and I've seen it where people are like, the glucometer, it, it just says hot, because they they're higher than 500. They're higher than whatever that glucometer is reading. Right? They're just up. So, um, but you want to ideally be around here, right? And so you, it's it's like a nice. Your body likes this nice little ups and downs, right? You eat you eat some breakfast, your sugar goes up. Insulin gets released, your sugar starts to go back to a normal level, glucagon's gonna be released, it's going a little bit low, a little bit high. Nice little things like that, right? And, but what happens with type two diabetics, um, well, first of all, you have to have the genes, right? If you don't have the genes for type two diabetes, you're not gonna get it. Your death is gonna come from something else, whatever cancer or something, right? But not from type 2 diabetes because it's not in your genes. But if you have the genes, you're going to get the type 2 diabetes. This depends when in your life are you going to get it. Are you going to die from a heart attack before diabetes? Or are you going to die from the diabetes before you die from a heart attack? It just depends, right? But it's in your genes. That's it. You're getting it. But there's things you can do that will put it off until you could die from something else. Having like a noble death, just a, you live to their 80, massive heart attack in your sleep, you just don't wake up, grandkids crawl into bed with you, give you a hug, you from crying, you like that type of thing. Instead of like losing your feet, going into dialysis, Um, yeah, so you, you know, you, you, this is what we tend to do. We tend to, um, we tend to start our breakfast with, you know, candy cereal. Now they're just, they're not even playing around. They're just calling it candy cereal, Sour Patch Kids cereal, or Honey Bun cereal. They're not even playing anymore. It's like, okay, it's a Honey Bun. We just made it a cereal and, you know, it's spiking your sugar. And then you're like, oh, your body's like, oh shit, make uh, insulin, hurry up, right? And then you start going down here, you're not eating, you come to work, you don't eat, you don't eat, you don't eat. Your sugar's dropping way low, you should have eaten a couple hours ago, you did it. Now you're really super hungry, right? And you don't got time for anything. So you hit the vending machine, because they got a new kind of brownie in there. You've been wanting to try it out. And also they like Pop-Tarts and a vending machine. Oh, that's crazy. You get Pop-Tarts too. And then you send your blood sugar way up here. So you're fish tailing. You're spending your whole day like this, up, down, up, down. And your body's just like, more glucagon, more insulin, more glucagon. It just keeps going, right? And all of a sudden you're like 55 in your body. You know what? Fuck you. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and eat whatever you want to eat. I'm not going to listen to it. Nah, 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 nah. Forget it. I'm not going to keep panicking. You're living life, and I'm just freaking out all the time. And your your pancreas is like, well, actually, your cells. Your cells are like, nah, forget it. Go ahead and make insulin. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna listen anymore. I'm not living this life anymore. And then that's it. So this is like you know, somewhere, somewhere around normal blood sugar. Who's to say what's normal? Right? It all depends. But. You know, something like that, and that's the thing with 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 like physiology. Numbers are 
Oh, no, I was just trying to say the little lines that you drew. My grandma has diabetes and something that's in her side, and it shows just that on her phone. Like, literally, what, the, like when she eats and everything oh, really? like going up and stuff. That's cool. That they and then, up. oh, she's got the thing on her arm? It's like in her stomach. Oh. And it shows all that on her phone for our doctor to that's see awesome. as well. But then I have the question. So if you have like part of your pancreas removed, are you susceptible to getting type 1 for the production of it if it's removed? No, because the rest of if it's not in your genes, the rest of your pancreas is going to do it. Okay. It's just, you just have some gone, but no, you're not going to. If you, if you can get type 1 and you're like 30, it's, you're not, probably not going to get it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Di diabetic patients, you're gonna you're gonna see they're like the worst. They're the worst people for compliance. Like compliant mean that, you know, the doctor told you lay off, lay off the jelly beans. Stop it. Let's start there. Lay off the jelly beans. Okay, okay. Take your medicine. Okay. They don't take their medicine. It's like you, you're about to lose a foot. Take your medicine. They don't take it. Like, I don't get it. Why won't they? And, and they keep eating jelly beans. I don't know how many people like come and I like, like sometimes like I work for an ambulance and like we'll pick up people. And they're they're like sweating and and he's got a bag of jelly beans. Oh, Coco Cola though. Yeah. That's my name. And they always say the same thing. They say Oh yeah, I think it was the Coca Cola. Yeah, you know it was the Coca Cola. You know what you did. Right. They always say that. Oh, I think it was like like they're coming. Okay, yeah, you got me. <laughs> I was doing well. You know, it's Easter. I got that whole thing of peeps and I eat six boxes. <laughs> it's like they kick the sugar that like goes into their blood the fastest. Like, all right, you got me. Yeah, they're the worst. You're gonna find that they don't, they don't. Dude, I'm glad that she's got something in her. Because you gotta like watch them. They're like kids. You, you just gotta be on them. If you're not, they're gonna, they're gonna sit there with a bag of cookies. You can't leave those people alone. You can't no. trust them. When I leave, he go to my and he'll be like, bring me a home from the stove. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you a stick of celery from the store. I'm not bringing you nothing from the store. Um, so that's the thing with, and, you, and if you remember like last time I was kind of putting on the board this, this relationship between um, glucose and glycogen. I mean, um, glucose, yeah, and glycogen, it's a lot of words. That's what the insulin is doing. Insulin is this way. It's not, it's lowering your blood sugar, but it's really saving it in your liver and muscle. And then the glucagon is breaking it up. It's not like the sugar's gone. It's there. It's just in a different form. It's just we get it out of the blood, put it in the liver and muscle, and then later on in the day, glucagon gets released. And that's, that's gonna raise the blood sugar like glucose by breaking up the glycogen. So whenever you break up glycogen, I expect blood sugar to go up. Whenever you make glycogen, we expect blood sugar to go down. Then we've got a third type of cell, delta cells, which we don't care about the cell name, but the third type of hormone is called somatostatin. Somatostatin is going to stop secretions of, of these. So it inhibits the two cells that make glucagon and insulin. It's also known as, it's another name for, even the words here, somato, right? Here's the word somato. So it's another word for growth hormone, inhibiting hormone. Because they're all kind of related. Like growth hormone is related to um, to, to insulin in a way and, and glucagon, we just we don't we don't have enough time to talk about that. That's a whole class, right? But in fact, if you read the book, growth hormone actually makes this other thing really.
release called insulin like growth factors IGF so I didn't tell you guys but you'll see it IGF oh, sorry. test is over that, that, that stuff's over so anyway this is going to stop secretions of these two the last one's called pancreatic peptide pancreatic polypeptide That's the four hormones, and this is going to stimulate the enzyme secretion. Stimulate digestive enzymes. So that hormone is going to tell the pancreas, okay, this person just ate, dump all your enzymes into the intestine. So we got four. People have no problem with the first two, like on a test, but they forget the other two. <clears throat> so raises blood sugar, lowers blood sugar, um, stops or inhibits secretions of these two, and then this one will um, cause digestive enzymes to be released. Now we're done. We're done with the endocrine system. If I put anything from the test, I might put this on a future quiz or something. Um, then the end of the one about PTH and calcitonin. But the other stuff you have, that won't be on quiz two or exam two. You already took exam one, so that stuff's finished. Or you're taking it, that stuff's going to be finished for now. I'll say the glucagon, I didn't say the first one, anyway. So that's raising, you said? Yeah, opposite okay. of insulin. Raises blood sugar. And then it lowers the insulin. Insulin lowers. It's confusing that there's like all these words that start with G. Glucose, glucagon, glycogen. Um, I'm going to actually, I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to start recording again to make it like a different.